Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about food allergies. I react to everything. Oftentimes, patients come in and they tell me I can only eat like five or six or seven types of foods. Otherwise, I have a reaction. I get hives, I get brain fog, I get digestive uh, uh, conditions, diarrhea or bloating, etc. What this patient might have is something called loss of oral tolerance, the inability to process proteins. So let's look at this. Why would that happen? Eating the same foods all the time, right? Out of sometimes out of convenience. So you're eating the same thing over and over and over. And then when the weekend comes and you try to eat something different, you get digestive complaints, diarrhea, bloating, brain fog, etc. Sometimes a normal aging process where you're not producing enough HCL or hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes, therefore you limit the number of foods that you eat. Or because you live alone, uh, you, it's more convenient to eat the same thing every day, right? Poor brain function. So this is about how the brain talks to the gut, right? The blood uh, brain barrier, uh, you also have the loop where the brain talks to the gut. and when they talk to each other, it has to have a certain signal, right? The signal we're talking basically about is um, the vagal nervous system, how from the brain stem it goes down and innervates the GI tract. So loss of brain function can certainly impact um, digestive issues. A classic example is when someone has a concussion and they have a brain injury, uh, one of the first things that will happen is the, the bonds in the brain or well, the blood-brain barrier might open up, and at the same time, the uh, leaky gut may occur. So the bonds in the gut may open up. So the brain function can certainly impact how your stomach will react to certain foods. Low stomach acid. Now we talked about this with aging. However, when you look at low stomach acid, there are um, rampant use of proton pump inhibitors, right, or antacids. So if you have low stomach acid, you can't break down your foods appropriately, your fats, your carbohydrates, um, your proteins. So it becomes critical to improve stomach acid in order to break down your proteins. Prolonged restrictive diets. Sometimes patients come in and they're trying to help themselves with a certain condition. And one of the more popular ones uh, that I've spoken about is the AIP diet or autoimmune paleo diet. Now, some patients come in and they're on an autoimmune paleo diet, but they sometimes are doing it incorrectly because they're just eating like 10 different types of things on the AIP menu, or they've been on it for years, right? But it's not really helping with their autoimmune condition. So those patients may also develop loss of oral tolerance because they're eating the same foods all the time, and they've never gone and reintroduced certain foods to diversify the gut, okay? Now, you can also have intestinal disorders, inflammatory conditions in the GI tract, Crohn's disease, um, irritable bowel disease. So there's a lot of things that can happen with intestinal disorders, right? And then leaky gut. Leaky gut or intestinal permeability. So the bonds in the GI tract open up and large proteins that should not cross into the bloodstream will cross, creating an immune response. So a leaky gut issue can be a problem, right? So what are some of the mechanisms? I like to talk about one specific type, and this is actually an immune dysregulation, right? In your GI tract, there are these immune cells called dendritic cells, and they go into the small intestine and they sample proteins, meaning they sample it to determine if it's safe for you or not. Right? So when they determine a sample of protein to be uh, adverse, they may have an immune response, right? So the dendritic cells are immune cells in the small intestine. It samples proteins to determine if there will be an immune response. So you'd want the dendritic cells in your small intestine to be quiet. You, do, you don't want it to overreact, right? So if there's an overreaction of the dendritic cells, it causes loss of oral tolerance because the dendritic cells will sample a protein and go, oh, I don't like it, 
I'm going to have an immune response. So this overreaction of dendritic cells or immune cells in the small intestine that sample proteins will overreact causing abnormal food reactions or quote unquote food allergies. Basically, you eat something out of your comfort zone, which is like 8, 10, 12 different types of foods, and then you get a reaction because you went outside of that. And that's because of oral, uh, loss of oral tolerance. How do we manage some of that, right? Supplements. What kind of supplements can we take? First thing we need to do is to break down the proteins appropriately, right? If you're on prolonged use of antacids or PPIs, you have to be able to kind of somehow wean off of that and use HCL or hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes because you have to be able to break down your proteins. If you don't break it down into its amino acid uh, components, then the dendritic cells will sample larger proteins and say, that's not right. So you have to say, we have to improve HCL and digestive enzyme output. If we can't do it, then you have to supplement, okay? Another thing we use is DPP4 enzymes. And these help to break down gluten and dairy proteins. So that's a pretty important one, because gluten and dairy is prevalent in pretty much all the foods, right? There's so many. If you just think about a pizza, right, it's gluten and dairy. So um, you have to be, be able to break down that protein so you don't overly respond, okay? You want to also use flavonoids. Flavonoids actually block the overreaction, the overimmune reaction of the, of the dendritic cells, dampening the response. So the immune response of the dendritic cells, right, and some of the uh, flavonoids that we can use is quercetin, luteolin, epigenin, and lycopene. Right? These flavonoids will help dampen the immune response of the dendritic cells. So the loss of oral tolerance can be a major player in terms of how you respond to certain foods. So it's important to reestablish one gut flora, leaky gut, etc. But we start with some of the digestive enzymes because you want to be able to break down the proteins, thereby um, uh, teaching the, the dendritic cells not to overreact, right? Because the protein will change once you take these digestive enzymes. It will be broken down to smaller components, therefore the body doesn't overreact, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.